So I should start with asking if anyone had any questions over any of the homework, because I know some people probably use late passes if they had them, and that's okay. Just, uh, but uh, if anyone has any specific questions I might be able to go over, please uh, use this time for that. I shrink. I'm waiting on my coffee. Mm, it's cold. By the way, if anyone wants to abuse the system, if you're near a Panera, I've gotten nine or 10 months of free iced coffee because I signed up for the three free months. And then right before it starts to charge, I cancel it and they give another three months. And I've done it like three or four times now. So pro tip, especially if you're in college and you don't have money, right? Uh, so anybody have any questions over any of the homework? Okay, I will take the wonderful silence as everyone did or knows what they're doing. Um, please be aware if you have any questions, you can always bring them up. Or as some people have figured out that I am usually pretty good at responding in um, emails and as well as uh, Discord. So however you want to get a hold of me, please get a hold of me. That being said, there is a poll on how you want your videos as YouTube or MP4. Please let me know uh, with that so we don't take up any time. And there is a link to the Jamboard I created this time in my private Gmail instead of the school one. So I don't get spammed. You can actually get access to. Uh, but I will also upload this as a PDF later. <clears throat> so you can have access to it. So this time we're dealing with lines, um, linear formulas, slopes, and that kind of nonsense. So uh, I have a lot of random things that I usually use for this. So I, uh, whenever I go over them, I'll show you some of my thought process of what I'm doing while I'm working through problems. Anytime. You want me to stop, go over anything, or repeat, please let me know. Um, so we're gonna start with a simple-ish problem here. <clears throat> so this is a this is back to basic algebra. Uh, we need to find a number, which is Q, uh, that when you times it by nine and add 10, you get eight. So the general idea of what we're gonna be doing is we need to isolate the letter by itself. That is the general idea of what we're doing for algebra. So you could do this by manipulating things in the equation by specific amounts. Uh, so rule one in my thing, And this is kind of the main rule. Uh, there's a couple other things, but uh, what you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other side of the equation. If I could spell, there we go. So what we end up doing is we kind of abuse the order of operation to get the letter by itself. We usually go in reverse order for order of operations. To isolate letter. So quickly, it can be either through the chat or you can talk if you feel like it. What is the order of operations that we're going to deal with? Um, if it adds, subtract, and print, 
Is, is that what you're talking about? Yes, but in order from the first thing you do to the last thing you do. Um, can I, you pinned us? Yeah, which is what? P parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, whatever comes first, addition and subtraction. Mm -hmm. So good job. So we have parentheses, exponents, multiplication, back in division, Wait, DJ. Yeah. Addition, subtraction. Subtraction. My brain is not working. So normally when you solve, you will go this way. That's that's how you would use to solve. Right? That's uh, not going to do it. not gonna like me so that's how we solve my problems however we want to in this case go in general this way and that's how we solve algebra problems is a general rule So we're going to want to do addition and subtraction uh, first. So what we'd want to do um, is we, ice, we find out if there is anything that's being added or subtracted to the side with the letter. So uh, let's do this find. Or subtraction. Oh, sorry. Step one. So the first step for math is to add or subtract numbers to remove them from the side they want to isolate. So I want to isolate the Q. So this part right here, wait, I have a highlighter. <laughs> what am I thinking? So this part right here, that 10 is what I want to get rid of. So that is what I'm going to subtract 10 from. And whatever I do to one side of the equation, I had to do to the other. So I had to subtract 10 from the other side. So 10 minus 10 is zero, which is what I want. I want to get rid of that one. And then eight minus 10 is negative two. So that leaves us nine Q is equal to negative two. <clears throat> so we've done addition, subtraction. Next we do multiplication and division. So we want to in this case, get that Q by itself. So we want to divide by, you, you do the opposite to, to get rid of things. So before we subtracted to get rid of an addition, now, since we have a multiplication, we have nine times Q. So we want to divide by the number in front of the letter get rid of that number because anything divided by itself is one i have a quick question yes um maybe jumping a little forward right now but that's only because i had a little trouble with one of the problem uh, practice problems it said um twice subtracted from a number i think it was twice subtracted from the variable what does that mean when they say twice subtract um, I would have to look at the problem itself. To, uh, do you know which problem number it is? Oh, no, I, I, 
to have my um, stuff all open, but uh, maybe when you come to an equation similar to it, I'll, I'll point it out. Or worst case scenario, you can always ask me at the end of class or at the, because I'll stay, stay around or on Wednesday, because this, this is over chapter two, right? Yeah. So yeah, worst case scenario, if you, do, if you run out of time today, you don't want to ask today, we can always ask Wednesday, because that's kind of what that time is dedicated for. Or you could say at the end of class and I'll answer there unless it comes up All in right, class. So I, I, or bug me in any of the 27 ways that is there. But All right, thank you. We'll figure it out one way or the other. Um, so this one, I want to divide by nine on both sides. So nine divided by nine. So those cancel out which is what we want, which leaves us Q. And then negative two over nine. Do not turn this into a number, to a repeating decimal. Uh, in general, and this is a good rule if you have to do math in life, this is e a fraction is easier to deal with mathematically than a decimal or a repeating decimal. Because unless you deal with a lot of decimals and know specifically what it is, I know what negative two ninths is and how to deal with that. It's a lot harder if it's, uh, what is two ninths anyway? If I give you calculator, where are you? Negative two repeating. So that's a lot more difficult. So we try to, to keep it as simple as we possibly can. Uh, and if you want to check this, by the way, what you could do, so option well, step three, the check, is we take Q in this case and put it in the equation. on top. There's also a way you can check it on the calculator. They show you how to do it. Yes. It, it's pretty cool how you do it. I was like, wait, I got lost the first time, but I did it again. Yeah, there's there's ways you can do it on calculators. Um, there's a lot of different ways. Uh, but this way is, you know, if I put, take it, put it in here, I will get, you know, Negative two ninths times nine, the nines drop out was negative two plus 10, eight. So that's another way to do it. Uh, I don't really care which method you use. It's nice to do that check. It's nice to know that I got my answer correct, but it, it's up to you how you want to check it. And I will never, because uh, I've had this happen before. If you have a different way of doing it, as long as it is repeatable and correct, I don't care if you don't use my method. So like I've ran into people who've run, done the Indian math and it's both mesmerizing and repeatable. So I don't care. Uh, so in general, you solve these equations in the exact opposite order that you would solve normal math with order of operations. So you addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, and then exponents, then parentheses. Although those can be, the parentheses can be worked with different ways, but we don't really get into that much. So another quick one. Uh, so we're gonna do the same basic thing. So that's step one. Get, uh, this was once again, it should be add or subtract. Um, based on the number of the side with the variable. So that num that letter is called a variable, by the way. That is just a number that we don't know. We just make it a letter. So I want to subtract 10 from both sides like that. So 10 minus 10 is obviously zero. So negative five V and then seven minus 10 is negative three. And then that's step two, once again, uh, multiply 
divide in order to get rid of number in front of variable. So I'm gonna divide both sides by negative five. Just like that. So those fives will knock out negative fives. And the negative sign itself can cancel out. So really quick, because it is kind of important. Um, I got a question. I have an answer. Um, I did three, three di divided by negative five. Does, why does it come out to a decimal? Five, negative five divided by three. Why does it come out to a decimal? 0. 0.6. Yeah. Because three over five is 0. 0.6. It's, it's point, sorry, 0. 0.6. Okay. That's just how it works. Okay. So if I have, I'm going to go ahead and make this. This is always was helpful for me when I was looking. Uh, but it's good for general. If I have a first sign of a positive, a second sign of a negative, my final sign will be a negative. If I have a first sign of a positive, a second sign of a positive, then I'm going to have a positive. If I have a first sign of a negative, a second sign of a positive, I'm going to have a negative. And if I have two negatives, it's going to be a positive. So this is generally how we do positive and negatives. Um, there's a couple different ways you could do it. Uh, two negatives make, or two rights make a wrong, or, or sorry, two wrongs make a right. So two negatives make a positive, or you can count the number of lines. If it's an even number, so one, two, three, four, then it's going to be positive. If it's an odd number, one, two, three, one, two, three, it's going to be a negative. It depends on how your brain works and how you want to do it. But just in general, those are the rules on when I divide or multiply by a positive and negative numbers, what do I get out of it? So since we have two negatives, we're going to get a positive. So V is equal to three over five, or as was stated before, 0 0.6. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Clear as mud? Sorry, that you can blame my old uh, uh, chemistry teacher for that. Whenever she hears crickets, that's just what she said. Okay, so this one's a little bit different because I have a fraction. Well, uh, sorry, one quick question for the last one. You said that um, a good rule would be to not try to put the decimals in there, but that last problem you also added the 0 0.6, is it because it's just one decimal place value? Yes, generally speaking, if it's a 0 0.6, most people who do way too much math knows that's roughly equal to three fifths. But if I have something like, uh, let me find a weird one. Mm. If I give you 0 0.34375, do you know what that is? It's 11.30 seconds. 11.30 seconds you could deal with 0 0.34375. You know it's probably something, but you don't know what. So that's, that's generally why. Um, okay. And as you do more math with those numbers, it's easier to deal with a fraction for canceling out or other things mathematically than it would be with a decimal. Because a decimal, you're just kind of stuck with a decimal unless you convert it. And then you're doing, then you've done math and then you have to undo the original math, if that makes sense. So that and more will take 
fractions as well as it will decimals most of the time, unless it asks specifically for a decimal, don't give it a decimal. Don't do, I, I know I'm in math class and I know you're doing a lot of math. Don't do more math than you have to do. Okay. Add it. Because no one likes doing math, even math teachers. You might, we might do more math. Deeper, though. Doesn't mean I want to, but my brain just does it. Okay, as I'm drinking coffee. So first step as always. So we're gonna add or subtract number near uh, on side of variable. So we're gonna try, we're gonna get rid of that three. So I subtract three on both sides. It gives us one half N equals three. So the second step for this, this is slightly different is multiply side to get of variable. So we're going to multiply or divide to get rid of the value in front of the variable. So since we have one half, we need to find the, it's called the reciprocal. So somebody wanted to say what reciprocal is? If I could spell. Does anyone know? The opposite? Close. Good guess, but not quite. Inverted? The inverted? The invert. Well, well okay. It, it, yes, it is inverted. What a reciprocal is, is if I take this number and multiply it by the reciprocal, I will get a one. If you invert the number, which is what the reciprocal is, it will give us a one. So the easiest way to find a reciprocal for a regular number is to switch the nominator and denominator, the, the ugh, top and the bottom. My brain is not working today, or at least my tongue isn't. So flop, not flip, the numerator and denominator. I could type it, I just can't say it today. So we flip the numerator and denominator to find the reciprocal. And then that number goes right here. Actually, it will go on both sides because we have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So that gives us two over one, I guess or just two. Okay, I get it, I get it. I follow the KISS method, which is why I do kind of lengthy ex explanations and stuff that you may not necessarily need because it usually helps. So that gets rid of the left side. So we have N. And then we have three times two, which is six. And then if we wanted, we could take that, plug it back in. One half times six is three, plus three is six. And yes, it is Monday and I'm having coffee at, to me, 3.30 in the afternoon. Support your caffeine habits. Where are you at, Mister? Or why is the time? Different? I'm in I'm in West Frankfurt, Illinois. Oh. I just moved from <laughs> Phoenix this last year, so. How's the weather? 
humid. I I thought I'd be okay. It's nothing quite like stepping outside, even if it's only like 85, 86 degrees, but being unable to sweat because it, the water just sits on your skin. It is truly, truly disturbing. But, you know. It's humid here too, and the mosquitoes are... Insane? Are insane. <laughs> well, uh, the humid here is 80 to 90%. So humid in Arizona is usually like 30-ish percent. Okay, so this one. Air is thick. Yeah, it's, I can't, I have trouble walking my dog because it's so bad. Uh, so this one can be done two ways. Um, so because of the distributed property, I could either rewrite this as and divided by four and... And all that is going to be equal to nine. And I will write in the print. I could, if I wanted to, rewrite it as this. And keep on doing the same. We've done problems like this one just before. Same basic concepts. But this gets really tricky. Um, so one of the things you want to do even though I said fractions are in generally a good thing. Avoid fractions till the end, if all possible, because fractions are where people make mistakes. So if you can get rid of a fraction and it helps you solve the problem, you do that. There's nothing wrong with this method mathematically. I haven't changed anything and I wouldn't change anything, but it's more annoying. And since I have the same thing being applied to both sides over here with this uh, N minus 11 all over four, getting rid of this four would probably help anyway. So I had to step one. Uh, So I want to multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom. So I want to take and multiply everything times four. So that times four, that times four. So these guys will drop out. And it leaves us n minus 11 and 9 times 4 is 36. And then our step two would be to do what? What do we normally do? Would you not multiply the n and the 11 by 4 as well or not? Okay, so what's actually happening is uh, it's like, it, it'll look like this. I'm gonna put this over on this side. So I'm taking all, everything on top and multiplying it by four. So it's actually four N minus 44 over four. That is actually what I'm doing. So yeah, I could distribute this if I wanted to. But since I'm trying to get rid of the denominator, that's an extra math step that you don't want to do. So the, there are times you may want to do something weird like, like that. This is not, you're not gonna run into any of them in this class. That's like uh, either linear algebra or if you get an advanced college algebra class. In here, um, do you go ahead? 
Um, do you put a, a one in front of the N, like imaginary number? Whenever there's a variable by itself, let me go ahead and put it here since that was asked. So, so a variable by itself is assumed to be multiplied by one. Sorry. So if you just have a variable, it's one times that number. So that's why you do this and that will cancel out. I mean, like I said, you can distribute it, but then you'd have to factor it again to cancel out the four. So don't do more math than you have to. So then we add 11 to both sides. So N would be equal to 47. And then you can check it again. 47 minus 11 is 36. 36 divided by four is nine. <laughs> oh, what part of Illinois? It's a big state. I'm like, six hours from Chicago, so. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to do this, mostly because there's questions on it. Uh, so this is an interest problem, sorry. But it's in your homework, you might as well get exposed to it. Uh, so we have some basic information. So for word problems, once again, The step one for a word problem is always write everything down out of the block of text. So this way, if you do it correctly, you only have to read this thing once. So I have A, P, R, and T that I'm looking for. So A is the balance, where A is the balance of the account. T, it says is the years. P is the principal. And R is the rate. So what I did is I wrote down all the variables and wrote what they are. So that essentially I've taken all this and even, even this, what I might end up doing because it's me, is this do is to write out the formula. So I have that formula there and I know what I'm doing with this. In order to solve one of these equations, you will need to have all but one bit of information. So if it doesn't give you all the bits of information you need, you can't really solve it. So, so Josh is investing money into a savings account that pays 3% interest, simple interest, which we'll get into that later. So this is 3%. So in this, so step two, look for all the numbers in the text and write them down. So I have a 3% and plans to leave it there for 10 years. So I have a, a T of years of 10. Determine what Josh needs to deposit now in order to have a balance top. Of $20,000. After 10 years. So step three.
determine what they want to find and Because I always find solving for one specific number is the easiest way to go. So it wants to find out, to me, I always want to find out what I need to solve and then isolate that and do everything else later. So the formula is A equals P plus PRT. And I need to, let me just put in here, Solve for P is what I'm going to do. So I need to isolate P. This is slightly different because P shows up twice in the equation. Since P is in both parts of this, you can uh, factor out P. So this right here. Oh, I do have that arrow. So what I could do, so I have the A and I have, I factor out P. So any number divided by itself is what? So what is P divided by P? Anyone? One, so one. Yep, one. And then since P, I don't really care if there's other variables. It will still say a one. I have one plus R T. So this way, I can have P as only one variable, and then get rid of everything else on one side. So for this one specific, I. I factored P in right side. That was the first step. I just realized I could do arrows. Then I want to divide both sides by that one plus RT. So step two. I should do it this way. I can just rotate it. <laughs> and that gives us a over one plus RT. Wait. equals P. And then from here, since I have the P isolated, my initial principle, 
I could just plug in numbers and solve. So my balance is twenty uh, twenty thousand dollars, and then I have one plus my rate. So on the rate, since this is a percentage, one second. it has to be in a decimal form. So you have to divide the number, the percent by 100. That has to be done or else you get really bad results. So we have 0 0.03 times 10. So we have 20,000 over one plus 0.3 times 10 is, sorry, 0 0.03 is 0.3 or 20,000 over 1.3. And then on a calculator that gives us an answer of $15,384.62. So in general, when you deal with money, you always round up pennies, never round down pennies. So if you have more than one thousandth of a penny, so 62, so I say 61.1, .1, it's still 62 cents. You always round, you should always round this down. They want this to the nearest dollar. So this would be $15,385 is what he should invest in order to get $20,000 in 10 years. If you get confused by letters, you could put in the numbers as soon as possible. That is okay. This is how I approach it. That's not how most people approach it. If the letters are messing you up, put in the numbers as soon as possible. That's okay. I always like dealing with letters because numbers can get kind of messy, but that's just my personal preference. If people get confused by all that, then just do it the way that works best for you. Okay. So, that was the only, I think that's the only word problem I'm going to do. There might be one more, but eh. uh, because I don't like overwhelming people with word problems as much as I possibly can. But there is something else we have to talk about, which is how to do lines, especially using slope. So slope is, uh, slope is the rate of change in a line otherwise known as the rise over the run. So it's how much an equation, a line goes up or down versus how far it goes left or right. Hence why I have this graph paper here. So if I have a point of origin of here, so this is zero, zero. Which I'm gonna mark. If I have a point that's over here and here, if I have these two points, I go up one, two, three, four. So I go up four. So I rise four. And then I run one. So slope is
rise over run. If that's how your brain works, fine. Just keep it that way. Um, there is a formula because we have ordered pairs. It is, sorry, my dyslexia kind of always kicks in here. Let's see, that's y sub one minus y sub two over x sub one minus x sub two. So that is what slope is. And that is given as a value m. So how much we're rising over how much we're running. So if when we have these, by the way, because I always get them back backwards, I always do this. It's alphabetical. So it's x, y. What we can do, and what I always do, is I do x1, y1, x2, y2, and then I just write out the numbers. Negative three, negative six, six, and negative 33. Um, I thought that the slope equation was y2 minus y1 and x2 doesn't matter. minus x1. It doesn't oh, matter. Oh, it doesn't matter? Oh. It, it absolutely does not matter which one is first and which one is second. And I always put the lower number first. Technically, okay. you're right, but it doesn't matter. Because if I switch them the other way, it's still the same two points I'm looking at. So I'm still going to get the same answer no matter what. And I could, I could do this both ways and show you that it's the same number. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to 100% admit that I was wrong and that I couldn't think today. So negative 6 minus negative 33. Whenever you have these, please, 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 please put in the parentheses if you have a second negative because things cancel out. Uh, negative 3 minus 6. So 6 minus negative 33. So when you have a minus a negative number, you're, uh, you're adding. So that's actually negative six plus 33. So or 33 minus six, which is 27. And three minus six, negative three minus six is negative nine. Uh, 27 divided by nine is three or negative three. So that is the slope. Do the equal signs. And just to show it works the same way, both ways. Negative 33 minus negative 6 over 6 minus 3 minus negative 3. So negative 33 minus negative six is negative 27. And six minus negative three is nine. So we have negative 27 over nine. So it's the same result we have over here, except the negatives on the pot, top instead of the bottom, but we get the same answer of negative three. So yes, you're correct. But it's something I noticed a long time ago. For this one specifically, it doesn't make a difference because as long as you know, because I could arbitrarily say which one of those is one and which one of those is two. It, does, it, just, it doesn't say which one's one and which one's two. I just choose. The one thing you have to do when you do these, and this is actually, welcome to Sticky Notes, make sure you draw ones from the same pair and twos from the same pair. I have to make sure that wherever I have set as an X of one, the Y sub one has to come from the same thing. 
And same thing with x sub two and y sub two. If I don't, it will be wrong. And that's where people tend to run into errors. Okay, so let me see the background of this. So this is the type of problem that you run into. I'm gonna set an origin point of right here. I'll even draw a line. Can I draw a line easily or no? So one, oh, I cannot. One, two, three, four. So this is the line. It's a really steep line. I'm not sure about that point. So you, oh, actually I did that backwards. I just realized. <laughs> so if you want, you can graph it out. You can do everything on here using this point. Uh, so, but there's a couple of things from here that would make your life easier. So in general, the point slope, or not the point slope formula, the equation for a line is given as y equals mx plus p. And just like we saw before, that m is the slope. And since the slope is, as I said before, the rate of change, I can put this in right here as the rate of change. The initial value is actually called the y-intercept. So it is given as zero comma b. So the, the y-intercept is zero B, but the initial value itself is whatever that B is, I guess. So that is whatever value up and down from the center start point you give this. In this case, it would be six. Does that make sense? Not quite. That was uh, having technical issues, so I missed a chunk of it. So did you get the rate of change? So this is the this is the equation right here. Y equals mx plus b. The rate of change uh, rate of okay. rate of change is the slope. M is the slope. So whatever numbers in front of X, which is negative 10, is the rate of change. Okay. The initial value is kind of the Y intercept. It's the point where I, if I entered a zero into this, it's where it would cross the Y intercept. Okay. Which is given as whenever I do Y intercept, it's zero B. So whatever this number is, when you have zero as an X value. But if you do it just as initial value, it's just that number. So if there's a number with no variable by itself in a formula, that's going to be your initial value. If there's a number in front of an X, that's going to be your rate of change or your slope. Okay, I see it now, thank you. Okay. Okay. This is the basic math behind the, uh, uh, it, it's a formula. So we're gonna figure this out. So we have, they want to know what rate things are increasing, which is a slope. So we need to find the slope. So we're gonna do year one, which is our initial year of 1982, 
year two, which is our final year, 1992, our investment one, which is how much money we started, 27,400, and our end investment, which is 37,400. Then we have I2 minus I1. So how much, basically how much I increased my investment over Y2 minus Y1 or how much my, how many years went by. So 27, or sorry, 37,400 minus 27,400 over 1992 minus 1982. So that would be 10,000 over 10 or 1,000. So we have a rate of change of 1,000. So we of note, when you start looking at investments, you want to see how much you've either increased or decreased. Um, so on this, Slope and relationships. So we have something called basically relationships with slopes. Positive slope uh, means value goes up over time. Usually you want to have a positive slope when you deal with money, especially your own. Negative slope means value goes down over time. A horizontal slope would be, uh, so we didn't really go over it. So a horizontal slope is when we have given, uh, let me see, given a, Something like this, where you have your crosshairs. A horizontal slope would be like this, where the value or the line just goes directly across, doesn't go up, doesn't go down. So that is where my y is equal to a number, means no change over time. Generally not liked. A vertical slope. means there's no change in time. It usually does not happen. So that would be like this. Come on. So like that. Okay, and this is the last one that we're gonna go over. Uh, wait, 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 So what does, uh, does X not have a purpose in this equation? It lets you know the number. X is, okay, so whenever you have stuff like this or in general, some of these equations, X is how you tell something is changing over time. Usually, if you remember like physical science way back in seventh grade uh, or any high school science classes, time is graphed on the x-axis. That is how we tell if things are changing over time. It's the same thing in math. So as you do any of these equations, x is always going to be 
what you change. Uh, so we measure things in response to the X variable. So we do Y as X changes. So X is always going to be there unless it's something like this guy. Does that somewhat make sense? So then we have this. So we have one more formula because of course there's always a formula. So this is called the point slope formula. And it's the easiest way to solve these two. So we can still find the slope. Like that. But then what we can do is take one, once we find the slope, as M, we can take it and put it into this first formula, which I'll show you to find the formula for the line. So first thing we need to do is find X of one, X of two, which I'm just gonna start taking them out, Y sub one and Y sub two. Then we would put them in the formula again. So negative one, sorry. Oh yeah, negative one minus 11 over negative one minus three. And then we take that as negative 12 over negative four which gives us three. So our slope equals, equals for this is a three. So at that point, we wanna use the point slope down here to find this. So in general, when you do math, use the easiest numbers to do math. So what I mean by this is we have two, no, two points on the line given to us as negative one, negative one and 311. The negative one, negative one is going to be easier to do than 311. So choose the easier one for you to do. So we have y minus negative one is equal to the slope, which is m, which is three, times x minus that negative one. Simplifying, y plus one is equal to three x plus one. Y plus one is equal to three x plus three. Then I wanna subtract one. Y is equal to three x plus two. And there is how you would find the slope given two points in general. So any questions on that?
Uh, if not, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here.